Now, let us go towards the start of the course. I showed you the application of electron microscopy and these things. The microscopy started with this person, uh, Anthony Van Leon Hoek. Although the compound microscope concept was a little bit present before him, and uh, the Jensen and his son Hans fitted several lenses within a tube and they tried to magnify things. In the modern day, all the people think that when you study in Cambridge and Oxford, you will become a scientist, otherwise not. But if you look into the history of the main discoverers of the human history, most of them were not even educated. This Leon Hyde, his father was a basket maker. He used to make basket for various purposes, for fruits, for various things, for grains, right? When and the history says that Leon Hoek didn't know any subject except his language. He can speak his language. That was his whole knowledge. And he's called the father of microscopy, the father of microbiology. Various titles are given to him. What he did, he started his job he was born in, uh, on October 24, 1632, and he was Dutch, right? In the Delft, in the Netherlands, he was born, and he died in 1723. Uh, I heard his name when we were in the ninth class or like that, and when our biology class started, we heard the name of Leon High. And uh, about in 2017 or 16, I was walking in a, on the street in Oxford, and there was a small, uh, what you call it, a stone on which it, uh, it was written that uh, probably it was like that, that Leon Hoyt lived here. So he had moved to Oxford, but in the start, he started work in a textile industry. And the industry would have not been of the modern shape, but they were making cloth and he was employed there. He used to count to separate thin wires, threads of cotton. And probably that gave him an idea that why not use something to magnify these threads and separate them clearly. I am thinking that perhaps his idea came from there, maybe something from somewhere else. But he started from there and he started to combine various lenses. He used to make his glasses and change their morphology, grind them and polish them and look through them and that led him with time towards the microscope, uh, which was optical microscope. So the Jason, and uh, they were before him in 1590, they were also working in that area. That uh, they fitted different lenses within a tube. And when you had to look through it, all the lenses contributed to the decrease or increase in the size of the image. So they were also playing with that sort of thing. And uh, they appeared enlarged and they knew that this lens has something to do with the enlargement, with the magnification of various objects. And that led them to an idea that there are many things which we can't see with our naked eye.
right? And if we use such aids, then that will help us to explore many, many new things. So in the start, if you ask me what is microscopy, and I tell you that it is an instrument to make things resolvable which are not possible with the naked eye, right? To make things, features resolvable which cannot be resolved by naked eye. You declare me a great professor because I said it and you learned it. But if I tell you that read a book of microscopy and I don't tell you that definition, then that book of microscopy has 10 chapters which are written on the same definition I gave you. Then at the end of each chapter there are 10, 20, 30, 40 references which are also written on microscope. So I open a new world for you. And the first glance, you thought that my teacher is not knowing, he is not intelligent. He couldn't define even microscopy. But after 10, 20 years, you will say, if I say the same definition, you will tell, uh, say that that teacher locked my mind. And the teacher who sent you to the library, who opened a new world to you. So what I teach you in the microscopy, they are basically the ABC of microscope. Microscopy is a huge field, right? Electrons that are coming from the electron gun, scattered by the sample atomic planes, and coming to form the image. This is basically the display, the practical display of the Schrodinger wave equation. Schrodinger wave equation goes the moment the scattering, the flow, the transmission of the electrons through a sample. And you solve basically the Schrodinger wave equation. And that is the image. So it is the practical representation of quantum mechanics. Right? So, microscopy is a huge field. We became the fourth runner of the compound microscope and the telescope as well. 1609, Galileo, who is called the, referred to as the father of modern physics, he also came to know that some people are playing with the glass pieces. They are grinding them, shining them, holding before the objects. They are enlarging or distant things becomes nearer with the telescopes. And that led him to look into the principles that what is happening to the fundamental radiations which form those images. And the Galilean mechanics, optics, started from there. So the world of science is not that much old. The history of microscope, electron microscope, starts from 1932. 1932. Before that, there was no material science. If I say, this statement is not that strong statement, but if I say there was no material engineering, it will be a good state because people didn't know what is happening to the atoms when we heat them, when we combine them with the other. So there was no engineering of materials before 1932. And before 1600, there was no microscopy. So the only world which was visible through naked eye was your world. And the optimum resolution of a healthy, naked human eye is 0.1 millimeter. So your world got stopped at 0.1 millimeter. 
you couldn't go beyond that atoms are an angstroms they are far away right so your world was limited to 0.1 mm <coughs> this was these people who started uh, thinking about that and the galilean uh, principles of lenses made many improvements in that direction <coughs> leon high only knew his language he had no formal schooling right so on your own self you are also scientist you only need to use your brain faraday the father of ele electricity and you can say electromagnetism and everything came from faraday he was not an educated person he used to be working in a press machine and from there when he was pressing the papers and making the copies he may have thought from fi roll magnet like the rotor magnet and get to do something and that led him to electricity and the world without electricity it was a 12 hour world people used to eat or drink in the morning when sun rose and when light was there and the world died when the sun went down you had a 12 hours day now you have a 24 hours day this is because of that illiterate paradigm right and it is so he had intelligence and patience along with a dominant thought to see when the star his discovery is discovered he discovered observed and examined microorganism for the first time in human history 1600 up to here only 400 years look into that the world is here for millions of years so all those people beyond before that 1600 they never thought of human cell they couldn't see anything their world was so limited right so we discovered of the observed microorganism and features no human <coughs> had seen before his unique discoveries rightly made him the father of microbiology and he used to be randomly looking into things sometime cut his nail and look into that in those lenses and microscope sometime look into a tissue leaves and different things and at the end the royal society of microscopy used to request him to look into that particular thing and tell us what is there he became so important man and royal society was not a small thing the leon high microscope had the maximum resolution up to 266 times when you write magnification when it is written 10 and that x or cross which is the multiplication sign right it means 10 time magnification when it is 266 and this sign of multiplication this mean he could magnify things 266 times and that was the maximum resolution achieved up to that time these revealed the incredibly diverse world of single cell organisms bacteria were not known to mankind before this microscope then algae and bacteria came to uh, the human eye by 1674 leon hoyt was able to observe a wide variety of materials from plants minerals humans and uh, animals through his little microscopes by 1674 
He examined hair, nails, eyes, and their parts, body, bodily fluids such as blood, sweat, milk, tears, and tissues from organs including muscles, livers, and brains. Leon High anticipated the concept of the cell as the basic structure of all life. How big a revolution it was. And an illiterate man look into that. We spent many years on education. We read many books, but we fail to apply them in the practical life. And he was illiterate and he discovered a new world with his microscope. This was his first microscope. 